I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we have Odella Glenn. She is the inspiring author of an amazing book. It is called Searching for God. This profound book is a call to all Christians to examine their lives, as well as their relationships with God. Sharing her own intimate journey from going through the motions to truly knowing God, this book is a wonderful journal that'll help you on your own journey. Join us today as we delve into her transformative story and explore what it means to find God after drifting away. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight. We thank the team at Inks and Bindings for helping us put her in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support authors like her by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing her wonderful book. The links are below this interview. Odella, great to see you here today. It's great to be here. I'm excited about it. I'm excited to have you on the show. The book is wonderful. What inspired you to write Searching for God and share your own personal spiritual journey? Well, it started as a child. I was born in a Christian family and I had a praying father, a father whose prayers were heard they reverberated throughout our whole house. And he was a kind of Joshua, biblical kind of Joshua. And you know, and Joshua's uh, main thing was, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Mm. And my father was that kind of father. And Going to church every Sunday and going to Sunday school was a norm. Mm -hmm. And he enforced, everything seemed to revolve around pleasing God. I believe the first words I probably was able to say was God. Everything revolved around, will this please God? And he was not concerned about what the other neighbors or what the trend was he kept to me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And he did not compensate and he did not deviate from it. He enforced it along with some thou shall nots, things that were forbidden because they were not pleasing to God. So I grew up there in that environment, in that setting. But as a young adult, I moved out on my own. I was now, quote, grown. Mm -hmm. And I was going to do things a little bit different. Mm -hmm. And things began to change. I started dabbling in some of those thou shall nots. Mm -hmm. And I was a little sinful as I began to participate in worldly stuff that had heretofore been forbidden. And after a moment, it seems like something is missing here. Something is gone. God no longer seemed close to me. I no longer felt a connection with him because I had drifted in another lane and another area that was not what I was used to doing. But I stayed in that state for a good while. And for years, now, in spite that I had dabbled in these sinful things, I held on to that discipline of going to church every Sunday. So I was out in the world through the week, but I was in church on Sunday mornings. And for years, I kept going to church, singing in the choir, going to Bible study, even teaching the Sunday school class. 
but I no longer felt close to God. I knew a lot about God, his attributes, his character, his works, but something was missing. I realized that knowing about God is not the same as knowing him personally. Knowing God means having a personal and intimate relationship and you experience the presence of God, his love, his grace. And I wanted to experience God personally. So I had to go searching for him. I searched in many church denominations and I didn't find him there from place to place. And, but I did find God. You might say, did you find him? Absolutely, yes. In the book, Searching for God After Drifting Away is my testimony of how I drifted, but most importantly, how I came back to God and how he will accept you and forgive you. Absolutely. It's a wonderful testimony. It's very, very inspiring. For the folks at home who feel they might have drifted away from God, what do you think they can do to turn around their lives? Well, if you happen to have drifted away from God, and there might be some of you who have never even accepted God as your Savior and that you haven't even attempted to follow him. So either or, whether you have been and drifted away or whether you've never entered, the first thing you can do is pray. You pray to God, confess your sins, and he will forgive you. He forgives your sin. He doesn't hold any grudges against what you did in the past. He will forgive you and put your sins in the sea of forgetfulness. He won't even remember them anymore. So you pray to God, you confess your sins, and you repent, which means you turn away from those sins and those thou shalt nots that you have been committing. Exactly. And once you do that, God will, when he knows you're looking for him, he will reward you. You will surely find him. Absolutely. I agree 100%. Um, acknowledge your mistakes. Um, pray for forgiveness. Confess your sins. But like you said, the last component is very, very important, and that's repent. You have to change your evil ways, right? Yes, definitely. Yeah. You don't just say, I'm sorry, you specifically name the sins that you know you have committed. And then you ask God to show you any sins that you've committed that you weren't aware of. It. Sometimes we don't know any better. Right. And so those sins we have committed and those things we have omitted doing, you know, can be in the sinful category, but God will reveal them to you. Absolutely. And when I first prayed to him about that, his he began talking to me and the first uh, message that dropped in my spirit was, uh, when you search for me with all your heart, you will find me. So he doesn't make it hard. He helps you and yeah. rewards you when you do it. Exactly. Yep. There's a lot of uh, motivation there to be on the right side of God. That's for sure. What do you hope readers take away from your book? What do you hope they learn from your book? I hope readers take away that I need to examine my Christian life, my Christian walk with God. Where do I stand? What are my weaknesses and what are my strengths? What am I doing that I need to stop doing? And what is it that I'm not doing that I should begin to do? 
as a Christian, uh, we are to, if you love God, you obey him and follow his commandments. Those things that he has told you to do, then you should begin to do them. You should pray daily and whatever he reveals to you, and he will reveal what you need to know. He will either put some person in your path to tell you about it, or he'll direct you to a passage in the Bible, or he will appear to you in a dream and tell you about it. There are so many ways that the Lord is with us. In fact, there's nowhere we can go to get from him, but we have to be consciously aware of that. And he gives us freedom to choose not the mannequin type thing where you just pushed and pulled. No, no, no. You have to choose to follow and obey his agreed. word. Agreed. A hundred percent agreed. This is an inspiring book. It just might change your life. It'll reaffirm your faith for sure. It is called Searching for God. It is a call for all Christians to examine their lives as well as their relationships with God. Odella's story is a transformative story, and in the book, she explores what it means to find God after yes. drifting away, and the essence of it is prayer and repentance. Odella, yes. thank you so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. Thank you for having me, thank and you. to God be the glory. To God be the glory. God bless you. Thanks so much for joining us. To the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time until next time on Spotlight.